Namaste. I welcome all my dear SSLC students and all the viewers for today's Sameda e-learning program class. Today we are going to discuss chapter number 6, Life Processes, which is there in your part 1 of your science textbook, page number 59 to 79. Students, all of you are ready with your textbook. Also, please keep a notebook to note down the points. In this particular chapter, we are going to discuss main learning points. Also, I am going to give you few hints which will be very, very useful for you to remember in the examination. So, students, this chapter we are going to study in five sessions. The main learning points we are going to study in the first session that is introduction to the life processes, types of life processes, modes of nutrition in that we are going to discuss about autotrophic and heterotrophic nutrition, photosynthesis and stages of photosynthesis. In the second session, we are going to discuss mainly heterotrophic nutrition, nutrition in amoeba, nutrition in human beings, especially digestion in mouth, digestion in stomach and digestion in intestine. Main learning points we are going to study in third session is respiration, types of respiration, difference between aerobic and anaerobic respiration, respiration in plants, also human respiratory system. In the fourth session, we are going to study transportation, transportation in human beings, blood vessels, human heart, blood and lymph, their role in transportation. Also, we are going to discuss transportation in plants, transportation of water, transportation of food and other substances in conducting tissues, xylem and phloem. In the last part, we are going to study excretion, excretion in human beings. In this, we are going to study detailed structure of kidney, nephron, stages of urine formation. Also, we are going to discuss artificial kidney, nothing but hemodialysis and also excretion in plants. Students, observe this picture. What you are going to observe here? Yes, your guess is correct. The first group is group of living things and the second group consists of non-living things. Something that is having life is called as alive. In simple terms, alive means having life. Those living organisms which are having life is called as living things. And you have studied in your lower classes about the difference between living and non-living things. Before discussing the difference between living and non-living things, let us see a small video related to the difference between living and non-living things. This universe has many bodies. Our solar system is a part of universe. All planets except Earth have only non-living things. But our planet Earth has both living and non-living things. Stones, air, mountains, soil, sand and water are examples for non-living things. How do you distinguish? non-living things from living things. You can see here seeds germinate to form a new plants. That means they grow. Plants grow to form a tall tree. They eat. They need food for their survival. They respire. They transport. Sunflower plants move in the direction of sun. They respond to the stimulus. Sensitivity plants folds its leaves when touched with the finger. Living organisms reproduce. They give birth to young ones. They are active. 
our earth is the only planet with a wonderful world of living and non living things okay students all of you saw the video have seen the difference between living and non living things now can you differentiate between living and non living things okay let us see living things move non living things does not move correct second point living things grow whereas non living things they does not grow living things breathe non living things they do not breathe living things reproduce whereas non living things does not reproduce living things feel but non living things they do not feel observe this picture what you are observing here movement in animals yes movement is one of the criteria to differentiate living and non living things in this picture you are observing kangaroo jumping and also frogs jumping you can see which is clearly visible to your eyes in the second picture cheetah running you can observe and also birds flying in the sky you are going to observe so these movements are very clear which is visible to your eyes some organisms move very fast whereas some organisms move very slowly so movement is one of the important criteria to differentiate between the living and non living things what are you observing here animals they are sleeping but still you can observe the movement because they are breathing there is a movement in their body during breathing and observe this crocodile does not show any kind of movement we cannot see any visible movement here but still it is a living now let us study movement in plants plants usually does not move from one place to another place they are having fixed position in this picture you can observe sunflower plant it is moving towards the sunlight in plants also you can observe the movement of their parts like stem leaf etc and usually the plants will show their response to the stimulus such as shoots response to the light whereas roots response to the water which is called as hydrotropism observe this this is sensitivity plant touch me not plant when you touch the leaf immediately the leaves are going to fold now the question for you students can visible movement of the organism alone define the characteristic of life your answer is correct you cannot say that only visible movement of the organism define the characteristic of life you have seen plants does not move but still they are alive and even some of the organisms were sleeping but still they are alive now you observe this picture plants during day time they will prepare their own food material in presence of sunlight here they will take up the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and gives oxygen as a by product during night time plants will respire and these movements are not visible to our naked eye we cannot see but still these are the important processes that taking place in plants observe this here plant seeds they will germinate you can observe the growth for about 1 week or 10 days here but here you cannot observe the growth for every minute or every hour but particular time period you can say 10 days or 15 days you can observe the growth of the plant similarly in human beings in other animals also particular time period you can consider months or years but every minute growth every hour growth 
you cannot observe in them. By this we can conclude that visible movement cannot define the characteristic life. Of course, there are certain movements that is taking place inside the body of the living organisms and these movements are molecular movement. You can observe the picture here, cellular movements. Of course, here there is an animal cell which consists of different organelles and these organelles perform particular function. Now, question for you, is this visible molecular movement necessary for life? What is your answer student? Yes, these invisible molecular movements are necessary for life because cell is the basic unit of life. We all studied living organisms are well organized structures. They can have tissues and of course, these tissues have cells. Group of cells forms the tissues and group of tissues forms an organ. In complex organism, they consist of different organ systems which are particular in their function. And of course, these cells are also having some smaller components in them and so on. And because of the effects of the environment, this organized ordered nature of living structures is very likely to keep breaking down over a time. If this orders break down, the organism will not be alive or the organism will not survive. So, invisible molecular movements are very much necessary. So, living creatures must keep repairing and maintaining their structure since all these structures are made up of molecules, they must move molecules around all the time. So, remember students, these invisible molecular movements are very much necessary. Okay, observe this slide students. In this slide, you can see the chemical structure of a starch. This starch is a polysaccharide which consists of number of glucose subunits. And you have studied plants prepare glucose in presence of sunlight and these glucose subunits join with each other to form a starch molecule. And of course, the rice what we eat, it also consists of this starch molecule. When we consume this starch, usually it is going to break down in our body during the digestion process and liberates a large amount of energy. So, this movement is also not visible to our naked eye. Observe this picture student. Here you can see the structure of proteins. These proteins are consist of mainly amino acids. Now, one question arises in your mind, from where these amino acids comes? Of course, the food what we eat, it consists of proteins. And these proteins are break down by the catalyst nothing but enzymes in our body. Again, these enzymes join together form a new proteins. So, this movement also invisible that is taking place inside our body, inside the cell. Observe this fatty acids. These fatty acids also necessary in living organisms. You can see the structures of different fatty acids here. And these fatty acids movement also very much required inside the body of living organisms. Hence, by these we can conclude that molecular movements which are invisible necessary for the life of living organisms. Now, question for you students, what do you mean by life processes? Yes, your answer is correct the basic functions performed by living organisms to maintain their life on this earth are called as life processes. So, there are varieties of metabolic activities that is taking place inside the body of uh, living organisms is called as life processes. Let us study the main types of life processes. Students, there are different types of life processes taking place inside a body of living organisms. Even it may be a unicellular organism or it may be a multicellular organism. All these life processes are very important that is taking place in a living organisms 
for their survival and maintenance of their life on this earth. Now, let us study one by one these important types of life processes. First is the movement. Just now, we discussed in the beginning, normally organisms move from one place to another place in search of food, which we observe in animals as well as in different organisms. Second thing, respiration. Normally, this respiration is an energy liberating process. Here, large amount of energy is released by the breakdown of the food. Next is sensitivity. So, living organisms will show the response to the stimulus in the environment. Next is the growth. All living organisms, they grow in their size. That is one more important life processes. Next is reproduction. Living organisms are having an ability to give birth to their young ones, which resembles their own. Next is excretion. Normally, during metabolic activities, chemical reaction taking place in our body. And there is a chemical reaction that takes place between carbon and oxygen. Numerous uh, nitrogenous waste materials are produced, and these waste materials should be excreted out of the body and that process is called as excretion. Next is the nutrition. This is also one of the important process, because to carry out all these life processes, we need energy and this energy has to be supplied fr from the outside of the body in the form of food. Students, I am going to give you a small hint over here for you all, that is Mrs. Gren. Remember this word Mrs. Gren, so that easily you can write the different types of life processes. In this chapter, we are going to study mainly four types of life processes students. That is first one nutrition, second one respiration, third one is the transportation and the fourth one is excretion. Now, let us discuss one by one. Observe this picture. First picture is the microscopic view of amoeba and the second picture is paramecium. Both are unicellular organisms. Does all this life process taking place in the unicellular organisms? Of course, yes. In unicellular organisms also, these all important life processes are taking place and all these life processes are taking place with the help of a simple diffusion process because the whole body of an organism is exposed to the environment. Now, question for you. In unicellular organism, simple diffusion process is sufficient to carry out life processes. Why? Of course, yes students. In unicellular organism, simple diffusion process is enough to carry out different types of life processes such as respiration, nutrition, excretion, etcetera. Because the entire surface of the organism is in contact with the environment. In multicellular organism like human beings, simple diffusion process is not sufficient to meet the oxygen requirement. What is the reason? Because the diffusion is a very slow process. Multicellular organism like human beings made up of millions of cells. So, simple diffusion process is a very slow process. It cannot meet the oxygen requirement of all the cells of the body. Hence, in multicellular organism, this simple diffusion process is not sufficient to, to meet the oxygen requirement. Now, let us study the first type of life process, nutrition. Just now, we discussed what you mean by nutrition. It is a process to transfer energy from outside the body of an organism or you can define it as a process of taking in food and utilizing it is called as nutrition. Students, can you define what you mean by nutrient? Yes, your answer is correct. Nutrient can be defined as a substance which an organism obtain from its surroundings and uses it as a source of energy 
or biosynthesis of its body constituents. Example, carbohydrates, fats, proteins and mineral salts. And most of these nutrients are mainly carbon based compounds. Students, just now we discussed life on this earth mainly made up of carbon based molecules. Hence, the food source what we consume mainly consists of carbon based compounds. Now, next let us study modes of nutrition. Students, there are mainly two modes of nutrition. One is autotrophic nutrition, where the organism prepare their own food. Second one is the heterotrophic nutrition. In this type of nutrition, organism directly or indirectly depends on the plant and plant products. Next let us study mainly about autotrophic nutrition. In autotrophic nutrition mainly two types are there. First one photo autotrophic nutrition. In this type of nutrition, organisms obtain their energy from the sunlight. And second type of nutrition is chemo autotrophic nutrition. And in this type of nutrition, organisms obtain their energy from the chemicals. And example for photo autotrophs are mainly plants and algae. Example for chemo autotrophs are mainly green sulfur bacteria, purple sulfur bacteria are the example for chemo autotrophs. Nutrition in plants. Students, can you name the process by which plant obtain their nutrition, which you have studied in your lower classes? Yes, you are correct. The process is photosynthesis. The process by which green plants makes their own food from carbon dioxide and water by using sunlight energy in presence of chlorophyll is called as photosynthesis. You can observe the equation also. Now, we are going to discuss about the raw materials required for the photosynthesis. Students, can you tell me the names of the raw materials which are required for this photosynthesis process? Yes, your answer is correct. The raw materials required for photosynthesis are mainly carbon dioxide, water, sunlight and chlorophyll. Now, next discuss about the events or the stages of photosynthesis. During photosynthesis, there are mainly three events taking place. First one is the absorption of light energy by chlorophyll. Second one is the conversion of light energy to chemical energy by splitting of water molecules to hydrogen and oxygen. And third one is the reduction of carbon dioxide to carbohydrates. Now, students, I want to give you a small hint to remember these three stages of photosynthesis that is ACR. A means absorption of light energy. C means conversion of light energy to chemical energy and R means reduction of carbon dioxide to carbohydrates. Next, let us study internal structure of a leaf. Internal structure of a leaf mainly comprises of epidermis, mesophyll cells and stomata. Let us discuss one by one. In epidermis, there are two types of epidermis are present. First one is the upper epidermis and second one is the lower epidermis which you can see in this particular picture. Upper epidermis usually covered by a waxy layer called cuticle which prevent the water loss through transpiration process. Whereas, lower epidermis has stomata which help in gaseous exchange. And remember these stomata are present only in lower epidermis. Next is the mesophyll cells. These mesophyll cells are the parenchyma tissue of leaf consist of green dot like structures called chloroplast. And these chloroplasts are the site of photosynthesis. And these mesophyll cells are also called as photosynthetic cells. Next one is the stomata. These are the tiny pores which are generally found in the lower epidermis and helps in gaseous exchange and transpiration process. Now, 
Will you please answer this question, student? What are chlorophyll? Where it is present? Chlorophyll are the green pigments, they are present in the leaves. Observe this picture. Can you tell me what is this? Of course, this is the microscopic view of stomata. When you observe the leaf, thin layer of the lower epidermis of leaf under the microscope by using saffronin or any basic dye, you can observe the structure of minute pores which play very important role in exchange of gases. These stomata play very important role in exchange of gases. So, you can observe the picture. Each stomata consists of a pair of guard cells. Normally, when the water diffuses into the guard cells, normally these guard cells becomes turgid and they will swell so that which causes them to open. Whereas, in case of hot dry days, guard cells have less water, usually they lose water, they become flaccid and they relax and the stoma is going to close. So, this is the mechanism by which the opening and closing of the stoma takes place. Okay. Observe this picture. Identify the chloroplast and guard cells in cross section of leaf diagram. So, can you identify the guard cells and chloroplast in the cross section of this leaf diagram students? Yes, very good. Your guess is correct. You can observe the chloroplast, even you can observe the guard cells. Chloroplasts are present in the mesophyll cells. They are the green dot like structure and you can also see the guard cells in lower epidermis. Stomata of desert plants remain closed during daytime. How do they take up carbon dioxide and perform photosynthesis? Yes, these desert plants take up carbon dioxide at the night time and prepare an intermediate molecule. The intermediate molecule is acted upon by the energy and absorbed by the chlorophyll during daytime. By this process, desert plants prepare their own food material. Till now, we have studied about different types of life processes and also we have discussed about nutrition, especially autotrophic nutrition, photosynthesis, also stages of photosynthesis, stomata. It is a time to answer few important questions. So, are you ready? Okay. Let us see the first question, which is the internal energy reserve in plants? Options are glucose, glycogen, starch and sucrose. Yes, student, your guess is correct, that is starch. Next MCQ is, the first step in photosynthesis is A, excitation of chlorophyll, B, production of assimilatory pigments. C. Photolysis of water. D. Synthesis of ATP. Your answer is correct. That is excitation of chlorophyll. I am going to give you few important questions which you have to do in your home as an assignment. First question, why many food sources are based on carbon compounds? Second question, why molecular movements are necessary for life? Third question, write three events which occur during the process of photosynthesis. Last question, when do desert plants take up carbon dioxide? Next class, we are going to study heterotrophic nutrition, types of heterotrophic nutrition and also digestion in human beings in detail we are going to study. So, thank you all my dear students. Thank you.